just change it. <laughs> all right? So another one is no personal content at all. It's like this robotic, everything about their industry, you know, the reserve bank is up to the mortgage prices again by 0.25, blah, blah, blah. And it's just the same industry information all the time. There's no personality. Now, if you go back to the very cliche of people buy from people they know, like, and trust, how do they get to know you? Unless they know something about you. Okay? So, here's a post that went really well for me about a month ago. So, I went to um, Wellington, New Zealand for a job. And I asked them if we could do it during school holidays so we could make a family road trip at the back end of it. Alright? So, this is in Auckland. And I don't know if you can read that for me, but it says I was actually being taken out by staff and security. So, <laughs> the story behind this post is that I am deathly, deathly afraid of the heights. And I haven't done, I hadn't tested myself for quite a long time and I kind of forgot. But it brought it all back to me when I went in the Auckland Tower. Anybody been there? <laughs> you know it's got the elevator, it's got like glass. So it started from then on. I was fully in panic mode. I had no idea. I was really close to that glass area. And my kids, there's also a glass bottom to the back of the elevator and my kids are jumping up and down on that. So that was freaking me out as well. And my husband's going, you're right, you're right. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Why didn't you remind me? Anyway, and then the glass doors opened and there's the vastness of Auckland and I just died. My knees went weak, my mouth was, I don't even know, super dry, but, oh, it, was, it was horrendous. So I'm pinned against the wall. The kids and hubby just ran straight out, oblivious. I don't know if that's a men thing, but anyway. <laughs> Just oblivious, oblivious. And then the security guard walks past, crying, sniveling, snot, everything. And he goes, are you right, love? I hardly answer. So he called over a couple of big Maoris, <laughs> these big burly Maori security guards, because I needed that to be picked up. And then they took me into a service elevator, and they said, it happens all the time, love. I said, yeah, thanks. BS, but thanks. And then they took me downstairs. So I, just before that, I, I took the phone, I grabbed it, and I, I gave it to my husband and said, you get the footage. <laughs> so I went back to the hotel room and I did this video about four hours later when I thought I'd recover. But I was comparing heights to things that we do in business. Like some people have a real fear of public speaking. <coughs> I clearly don't. I don't have that one, all right? But they have a real fear of taking a chance with hiring a new staff member that they're not quite sure about, or expanding a business, or taking on venture capital. There's a lot of fears around business. So I was comparing this heights with that, and it just went off. But it was also a lot of comments about, yeah, I have a fear of heights too. And there was a, there was a relatable commonality between us. Like for example, who is afraid of heights in this room? Yeah, this is maybe like 10 or 15% of this room, okay? So there's a related, background of relatedness. Now, the other one I did, which was just two weeks ago, this is my hooch, hairy hermit, okay? Rescue him, I had three weeks on death row left. And my little, my little munchkin. Now, he did have to be fired, he was head of security, but since every time somebody comes to the door, he licks them to death, he, he had to be promoted. So now he's head of health and wellbeing. And in, within those comments, you wouldn't believe how many people put up posts of their dogs and saying, yes, this is my head of marketing. <laughs> um, accounts retrievable. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so here I'm comparing co-working spaces to working at home, because I have been in co-working spaces. But I miss my dog too much. So now all my staff come into the house. Too bad if you don't like dogs. <laughs> You've got to put up with him or this is not the right place for you. But again, it's that background of relatedness, okay? Now, there is a line. If you want to share information that would be probably better off speaking to a shrink about, it's probably not going to do well on LinkedIn long term for ROI. 
you'll get a heck of a lot of engagement on that post, I can tell you. All right, when the Me Too campaign came around, there was lots of them. Did anybody see those around LinkedIn? There was a massive amount of people going into that. But is that actually gonna do anything for your business? Or was that just unloading? That, that's the question I was left with. So put some of your personality into it. If you are the crocheting knitting champion of 2007, and you're proud, put it in there, okay? I am actually 2007, the dog I had before this, national fly ball champions we were, national. If you don't know what fly ball is, please Google it. It's awesome dog relay race. I loved it. That was before kids, BC. <laughs> now, the third biggest mistake is not embracing community. Now, community can be your staff. It can be the people in your co-working space. It can be when you come to a networking event and you've gone to your B&Is or your whatever's, your real business, uh, what's it called, pub thingy? Pub biz. Pub biz, thank you, right? That's part of your community, but there is also 645 million people in the big community if we go to a macro level, okay? So, this is a campaign I did which I actually won an award for last year with the Social Media Institute, okay? And this is called a hashtag blast. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it tonight. All right, now how this actually relates to your business is that if you've only got a team of say eight people, this can be done. So I learned this technique about two years ago. There was a company, an IT company, that decided to launch a product. So all of their staff 